going to frame something here, and I mean it as a compliment. Mm -hmm. So, do you consider yourself like a literary megalomaniac? I guess is the way to put it, and I really do mean it. In a co I mean it as a compliment. Do I have little minions running around? That I don't know, but I'm sure that's a great story for another time. I have all these little tiny, tiny poets following me around. I guess if I think the way I was, <laughs> the way I was thinking but about it. I don't it, wear a cape. Never wear a cape. <laughs> always gets caught in the door. Yes. <laughs> well, the way I think about it is, so the Native American literary tradition is a great vehicle for a lot of ways to come across in that. I mean, everything from poetry to screenplay to young adult novels to novels to children's books. I mean, it, it, art and critical claim are kind of two separate animals. So I guess just to follow up, if you were to tell me while given any text that you were writing or any type of literary adventure you were diving into if your kiln was heating up in the fridge and you were working on making dinner i'd call you a renaissance man so it's kind of like a fine line so of fine line between renaissance man and megalomania i think it's close <laughs> i think it's close so that's the compliment you know i mean uh -huh. if if you're able to bridge so many different ways of accessing a story i mean People traditionally don't do that, at least in the literature I'm familiar with these days. But actually, see, that's one of the things that's unknown or, or doesn't, it doesn't get talked about. Uh, you know, in the 60s and 70s, when Native American literature really exploded, uh, you know, the, the official literary term is, you know, the Native American literary renaissance. Uh, all of the writers, you know, Joy Harjo, Simon Ortiz, Leslie Silko, Scott Mamaday, James Welch, Adrian Lewis, Linda Hogan, uh, this enormous group of people, they were all, from the very beginning, multidisciplinary. Yeah. Uh, they, were, they, they were sculptors, they were painters, dancers, singers, potters, jewelers, fiction writers, novel writers, nonfiction, poetry. So, in fact, as I came of age as a writer, as I was first experiencing literary fiction and Native American literary fiction, I didn't know you were supposed to choose. Mm -hmm. So, for me, it, being multi-genre was natural because my direct influences were all multi-genre, so I just copied them. Now, what does it say about Native American culture that every Native American writer of the 1960s and 1970s was multi-genre? But what does it say about the changing literary culture now that, that most, of those, most of the Native American writers now are one genre? They're poets or they're fiction writers. Uh, or they're filmmakers. There are far fewer multidisciplinary Native artists and multi-genre Native artists as there were in the past. So I don't know why that has occurred. So I used to fit in to Native American literature because I was just like everybody else. And now I'm an anomaly, but I haven't changed. The Native American literary world has changed. Uh, so I, I just write what interests me. I don't ponder that nearly as much as the people around me ponder it. it it's just fun to write in different genres. And challenging? Uh, well, I mean, if I could make a living just writing poems, I would. Uh, po I'm a natural poet, I think, and it's, it, novels are marathons of agony and doubt and self-punishment. Uh, you know, my relationship with my poetry is like, this, is like the first three years of a great marriage. And my relationship with my novels is like the year 17 through 22 of a bad marriage. I mean, you have kids and stuff, so you stay together. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're dreaming and other things. I mean, if I didn't have to write novels, I wouldn't. Really, I wouldn't. But I, I like being a full-time writer. So I'm incredibly lucky in that. <laughs> you know, when you talk about a writer having a day job, you know, you need a day job to support your career. My day job is novels. Uh, my love is poetry and my day job is novels. I mean, how lucky is that? I'm incredibly privileged. <laughs>